Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 75 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do the best I can to answer what I can So let's get right to it, this one's called Flat Earth New Zealand Kia Ora Mark I hope all is flat and stationary. I will be listening to your show today on TFR New Zealand time, Wednesday, 2 p.m. I've listened to the past two shows and they are great. It's good to be up to date with what you have to say. I also listen to Jaronism Raw, great show as well. It's so uplifting knowing that you two are fighting the real fight for truth. Hopefully you get this email before the show and you give me and Flat Earth New Zealand a shout out. No, sorry, <laughs> this email's really late, but it's not my fault. Anyway, on a side note, I heard that Nikon is bringing out the new P1000, which has an optical zoom of 125X rather than the 83 on the P900. I wonder if the NASA science guys know this because their curvature will fail further to wayside with this new tech on the horizon. Once these become available, I'll be purchasing one so I can do some distance tests here in New Zealand. I'm so excited to get these tests completed and we'll be filming them for the Flat Earth community here in New Zealand. Once again, thanks for fighting our fight. Staying flat always. That's from Chad. Yeah, Chad, let me know how that goes. Uh, it should be up. Pretty soon, 125 zoom. Yeah, that's amazing. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I recently watched your YouTube videos about the Flat Earth and all the government's lies. I don't understand why more and more people aren't concerned about this. I want to get involved immediately, but I'm not quite sure how or what to do. Why are we being lied to about this our own home? Verbatim. Uh, I need answers, as I'm sure all Flat Earthers need. Anyway, how do I get involved? That's from Tess Boyd. How do you get involved? You start sharing the word. I know I've said that the first rule of Flat Club is you don't talk about Flat Club. Same thing with the second rule. But at this point, it's everywhere. And I'm not going to tell you exactly why I know this or how I know this. But it has crossed a lot of boundaries and uh, it's in a lot of circles right now. So get the word out. That's what everyone can do first however you want to do it. Social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Flickr, Grinder. I don't know, whatever. Something. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide, Coast to Coast, and the Throne of God. Hi, Mark. Please send me the Survival Guide, both Coast to Coast and Throne of God. And my question is, I'm told there are thousands of orbiting satellites, so why are they not visible transiting the full moon? Thanks, Tony from Denver. Yep, absolutely right. Uh, you can look it up on Space Track or whatever. There's supposedly thousands and thousands of objects that are flying around the world, and there's so many things wrong with it. I, I don't think I could go into too many of them here because it would take too long. Um, the, the first two that come to mind are, why don't we ever see them below the ISS? There should be, the ISS should be viewing satellites all the time going near them. But the other one kind of falls into the movie Gravity scenario with George Clooney and Sandra Bullock, which is once one satellite gets smacked by something, remember if it's mainstream science, something's going to get smacked, law of averages, by some sort of rock, meteor, comet, blah, blah, blah. It's going to get hit and then it's going to tumble out of its orbit and it's going to run into other and pretty soon it's going to start a cascading effect and all the satellites it's going to be this this jagged waterfall of metal up there and, no, and nothing would survive so why hasn't that happened yet in fact why don't we ever hear stories about satellites going down why when any meteor shower happens why don't satellites run for cover why don't they retask them never hear about that ever ever this one's called bitcoin meetup april 25th flat earth discussion hi mark this is Masai. nice to contact with you my partner and i have been following you for some time learning a lot from your videos i am a colombian girl but i have been traveling and living in china with my partner brett i'm also involved in bitcoin mining in china canada and colombia we are also part of the wait a minute hang on hang on uh oh this is a solicitation thing i don't know how i don't know wait a minute wait no it isn't no it's not she's just pitching crypto okay anyway sorry i didn't mean to I, I was a little suspicious because it's talking crypto throughout our travels like any other people we search for answers to be honest with you the fe concept comes to mind before any other topic we are wondering if you're willing to discuss further neither of us are avid youtubers we return to china the first part of may uh, it's, no, it's too late now. Before the 10th, we were also fairly mobile for the next couple of weeks, aside from Boulder, Colorado. Uh, Bitcoin meetup on the 25th. 
I assume you are not an easy person to reach. It's still me based solicitation. And maybe my email sounds a bit crazy, but before going back to China, I would honestly like to have a talk in person with you. I just define myself as a seeker of the truth and it's not easy to find people that is very aware of some realities. And as I'm learning, I know deep in my heart that meeting you is possible and we will learn a lot from you. Thanks. Um, I'm not sure what to tell you. I, I appreciate that, that you, you want to meet me and stuff, but the whole Bitcoin cryptocurrency thing, eh, not exactly on my radar. I'm flat earth 24 seven. That's what I do. The Bitcoin stuff. Yeah, I, I know it's real trendy and hot right now, but it's financial. I, I don't really want to be tied to that. So anyway, just letting you know. This one's called Survival Guide. Please hear some info on me. Mark, I'm a 60-year-old ex-Royal Navy Chief Airman, served 23 years, and been out of the rabbit hole for six weeks now. Thanks for all the hard work provided by you and Patricia and some others. Some things that happened in my career in the Royal Navy make sense. Now I'm armed with my newly acquired Flat Earth perspective. I am interested in activity in Antarctica, the South Atlantic, having fought with a 3rd Commando Brigade, the 846th, as a young man in the Falklands in 1982. Huh. I have, I have never met a person that fought in the Falklands. Two years ago, 2015, I was invited to fly back to FI on a military flight and stayed... Oh, Falkland Island, I think. Two weeks in the War Veterans Lodge in Port Stanley. The flight down had two stages. Eight hours to Ascension Island, then six hours to the Falklands. Airbus 8330 MRTT. The passenger list included Antarctic survey people, oil company personnel, civilian Falkland Islanders, together with military garrison personnel, plus me. I sat with the Antarctic survey people who were very reluctant to engage in any conversation as to why they are going down there. Even the oil company personnel I tried to chat to on Ascension Island stop off point where were evasive in their situation to say the least the military personnel were just like i used to be only interested in getting out getting their tour done so they can return home again although my visit was to revisit areas of interest from my 1982 war experiences i made some good friends with the islanders who lived there and drank a lot of rum I intend returning to the South Atlantic next year. Now I have the desire to try to get as close to Antarctica as the authorities will allow. I know I can reach as far south as Deception Island without raising questions and as little at little cost, only about 300 pounds. Basically, I have to join a crew. Well, there's a cost there. Way back, I served with the Royal Marines for two winters, 200 miles within the Arctic Circle, and have extreme cold weather survival experience tracking Russian movements. I also spent an evening backstage with Sir Ranulf Fine. Oh, Randall Fines. Disco oh, discovering, discussing his expedition on the South Georgia Islands. He's a great guy and is not part, to my honest knowledge, of any conspiracy. To get to the Antarctic continent, I can only think to apply for a janitor type or kitchen porter job at one of their stations. Coming from my background, together with cold weather survival experience, I may get through selection, if lucky. Once in, well, I'm a good listener and I can make mental notes on the sun. This is all I can think in what I can do. I've been racking my brain. Being a veteran and a South Atlantic with South Atlantic connections is a rare advantage most flat earthers would relish, I suppose. Incidentally, my military to Falklands in return cost me only 175 pounds. I've been decorated by the Queen, attended a garden party at Buckingham Palace last year, and was presented to the Duke of York who I first met in 1980 at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Keep up the fantastic work, Mark. There is no going back now, shipmate, as we all live in a flat-bottomed boat now, as opposed to drifting around, clinging on to a spherical buoy. Kind regards, Rob. Full name, not for broadcast. Oh, okay, I'm not going to read that. I'm on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. And don't forget my survival guide. Yep, and I sent him a survival guide. Cool. All right, this one's called, Hey, Survival Guide! Mark, I've been investigating Flat Earth for a couple of years. I'm a former teacher, but I'm now observing my surroundings and checking out scriptures for truth. Thanks for your work on this. Can you please send me your survival guide? Thanks, Joyce Wilburn. Yep, send it to her. This one is also called Survival Guide, and all it says is thank you very much. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to say thank you. Just say Survival Guide in the title if you want it and you don't want to chat with me. And that's from Fred Thomas. This one's called Big Earth. Mark, what are the chances of a scenario like this? Okay, let me click on the view button and it shows 
Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Earth. Uh, basically that we're a flat part on a much, much larger spherical object. Yeah, yeah, that's possible, of course. But you're clinging. Remember, the reason why you're even clinging to that is because of the globe conditioning. It doesn't have to be a giant spherical Earth. It doesn't have to be space or a solar system or a galaxy or anything. It's just that you've been told this so many times that that's all you know. Remember, we believe the world that is presented to us. And if you start when you're kids, whew. Anyway, this one's called Issaquah Guy, pick from of Cozumel from Mexico. Mark, I hate to, I hate you, but love you at the same time. Thanks, that's great. For the past two weeks, I've been listening to one of your podcasts. I have stopped listening to music in my car, stopped watching TV, and have been told by my loving grandmother to get out of her house. <laughs> Seriously, she said that and also told me to go see a therapist. A new addiction obsession has taken over me. My curiosity to find legit answers is nothing like I've ever felt before. So I went to R Riviera Maya, just south of Cancun, over New Year's 2018. While there, I took a picture of the island of Cozumel, which is about 30 miles from where I stood on the Mexican beach in the Caribbean. I, Caribbean? I, no, actually, it's Pacific on the other side, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. I've attached the picture that I took. Now I did the math of the supposed curvature of the Earth and the drop distance. Uh, oh, wait, it might be the Caribbean. No, no, I still don't think it's Caribbean. Uh, whatever. Um, distance 30 miles is about 450 feet. How the hell am I able to take a picture of Cozumel if it's supposed to be 450 feet around the curve? Apparently the tallest building in Cozumel is only 200 feet. I'm convinced that I could take a clear picture like this with my cell phone. Then having a really nice camera would get a real clear image of what we're looking at. I was very excited to realize that you are a fellow Washingtonian. I'm here in Issaquah, and if you ever want to meet up locally around here, I would love to be able to come through and meet others who are on the search for answers as well. Thank you for being you, Robbie Baltazar. That's awesome, Robbie. And yeah, yeah, we, we in fact, we just had a meetup in Muckleteo recently, and there's quite a few that have been happening in Washington. The second one ever was up in Edmonds, Washington, which is just north of Seattle. This one's called Musk and Tyson Photoshop's Created. Uh, hi, Mark. If you can use any of these for your program slideshow, love your show. Thanks, JT. Yep, he sent me some pictures. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark, and appreciation of your Flat Earth series. Thank you for going so far for the truth. From my, gr from my background, I agree. This planet cannot be round. Just applying the physics of centrip centripetal force, Earth cannot be an oval, let alone a ball. It would simply fall apart. Thanks to good software, the fake UN propagated globe theory can't be disproved. However, the biconvex disk theory holds up quite well when we apply the real solar system and universal physics. If I knew how, I'd post this on YouTube. If answers solves it answers solves most of the riddles you pointed out so well. Case in point, the air travel mystery to cross the magnetic field of the disk is much more difficult to achieve than one would think with current beliefs. Crossing diagonally would require imposing a temporary hole for an extended period of time to fit a triple seven through. With a stellar stream of electromagnetic field being constantly generated between the sun and Earth's edge, the smart choice is a straight line through. We can punch the hole through for only a short time due to the friction generated by the magnetic fluctuation and heat output of the instrument required to make the hole. This would mean there is very little land mass other than Antarctica in the southern hemi-convex disk. Share your thoughts. Sincerely, Chris. I, I don't know where to start with that one because you're, you're talking about a brand new model. Advanced maps, I don't really get into. I start with the AE map, and then I pass it on to other people in the great and wonderful Flat Earth University. Uh, in fact, you want to start with advanced maps, I'd, I'd go see... Um, oh, crap. I can't remember his name. Shoot. Ah, no worries. No worries. Uh, I'll, I'll think of it later, and then I'll, I'll yell. So this one's called Quote... Mark, I consider, oh, the quote goes something like this. Uh, I consider that a man's brain originally is like an empty attic and you have to stock it with such furniture as you choose. A fool takes in all the lumber of every sort that he comes across so that the knowledge which might be useful to him gets crowded out or at best is jumbled up with a lot of other things so that he has a difficulty in laying his hands on it. Now the skillful workman is very careful indeed as to what he takes into his brain attic. He will have nothing but the tools that may help him in doing his work, but all of these he has a large assortment and all in the most perfect order. It is a mistake to think that little room has elastic walls and can distend to any extent. Depend upon it, there comes a time when for every addition of knowledge you forget something that you knew before. It is of highest importance, therefore, 
to not have useless facts elbowing out the use useless facts out elbowing out the useful ones and that's from uh sherlock holmes a fictional character and that's from chip baker who writes some of the music for my stuff thanks chip that's good it's awesome this one's called survival guide and thanks what it do mark <laughs> really Ron J. Jr. coming live from that 44 Acres Homes Knopf side H-Town. Oh, I think that's Houston, right? Thanks for the birthday love on your show Tuesday that you and your round from New York gave me. Wow. Shoot him my email and hashtag number. He seems like a cool ABN. I'm not going to read what that stands for. Like me, you guys are Archer fans, which makes you and him awesome and epic. I'm currently watching Archer Vice. They are trying to flip those bricks of that A1 Yola <laughs> and doing a horrible job. <laughs> Please come to Houston again for the meetup. Tell Patricia she is truly different and cool for giving her cats a Facebook page. That's true. Patricia Steer does actually have a Facebook page just for her cats. And you keep giving folks at NASA that asshat musk and science neil the ass tyson the fe business you got him sweating like leon sphinx at a spelling bee <laughs> that's an old joke uh fe soldiers troops got him sweating like r kelly at a girl scout meeting i've heard that one uh now back to archer danger zone <laughs> thank you ronald <laughs> wow and i had to read through all the weird punctuation and emoticons during that thing uh, this one's called Bill Nye's Soundbite. Uh, hey, Mark, there's a soundbite of Bill Nye saying, as we say in comedy, when he answers a question at 9 minutes, 20 seconds, thought you might want to use it in your video intros. From where it's flat in Canada, Jason. Yep, heard it. It's good. Bill Nye can suck it. This one's called Coast to Coast Interviews, Please. That's from Mark Kozak. And yeah, if anyone wants the Coast to Coast interviews, because as you know, you can't put them up on YouTube because who would have thought out of all the media, you know, I, I get blocked every once in a while, blocked, where it's like, oh, sorry, you can't use our material. But I've only gotten a one strike from any interview and I didn't even put their interview up and that was Coast to Coast. I just put up a trailer saying that I was being interviewed from them. Didn't even have the interview anywhere on it. And the intern is like, oh, I'm just going to strike anybody that uses the word coast to coast interview. He didn't know it was like 50 seconds long. It's like tarred. So anyway, uh, yeah. So if you guys want the coast to coast stuff, you have to email me and say, I want your coast to coast interviews. And I'll shoot it to you through WeTransfer because they're pretty big. I think they're like 100 megs total. Uh, both of them, both from Connie and um, George Norrie. This one's called Hot Tip. Oh, thought that would get your attention. Winky face. Funny. Hi, Mark. A hot interview tip from a pilot no less today i was in comments in the flat earth video saw this comment and this guy wrote after 28 years of commercial flying i've yet to flight plan for coriolis extra radius reset my ah for changing curvature it's flat and motionless pilots basic study guide please read 1.1.2 and let that sink in every pilot was taught this but some are still asleep and that's from aerostudents.com slash courses slash flight dynamics slash LG. Then I asked him if he'd ever been interviewed by a Flat Earth channel and how many pilots he knows that are flat. His answer, hi, I was taught about Flat Earth 30 years ago in flight school, but it didn't click around until about 2012. Then three years of rehashing info until I finally woke up, not interviewed yet, uh, through a pilot's, private pilot's forum around 70 other pilots. Uh, and the guy says, damn, 70 pilots are talking about flat earth. That in itself doesn't surprise me, but this guy sounds like he might be willing to be interviewed. I would love to hear more pilot interviews. I think they are mega powerful. Uh, ask him, you would be perfect to interview him. Of course. Yeah. Anyone wants an interview, just, you, you have to call me. I, I don't reach out. You have to, you have to solicit me. This is different from higher side chats where it's like, they've got to reach out to you because they're so high and mighty. Yeah. Whatever. Flat earth's bigger than higher side. So if anyone wants to, wants to be interviewed, shoot me an email, say, Hey, I want to be interviewed. Cause I, I don't want to twist anyone's arm. I want them to come and be able to, you know, get to that point where it's like, yes, I want to talk about this. And then they, they get a hold of me. This, uh, he ends this with, by the way, the flight training document he linked to, I personally had never seen that before. I'm sure you have. I think that those of us who came to FE in 2017 may and later might have missed that document. Wow. They can't explain flight dynamics without assuming flat earth. And there is a, there it is in black and white. So that document might be a great thing to bring up again for all the newbies and the medium newbies like me. All right. You know what? I will save that document. So, and that's from Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay, I put that in my to-do 
pile. This one's called Survival Guide. I got your blue marble shot hanging. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so he sent me, hang on. He sent me blue marble shots. Let me take a quick look. Blue marble, blue marble. Oh, right, right, right. He was with a, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's glow in the background. It's good. Yeah, I remember this. Thank you. And that's from Stephen Griffith. Thank you, Stephen. This one's called, hello, from Samantha Stewart. Hi, Mark. I just thought I'd drop you a line because I'm chilling at home over here in New Zealand watching your Flat Earth Clues vids. Bloody brilliant, my friend. Fascinating. Thanks for all your work. Cheers, Samantha Stewart. Thank you, Samantha. Always good to hear encouragement. That's what keeps me going. What keeps me from drinking. That's not true. I actually still drink. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, I've been a Flat Earther for a while, and I would like to ask you a few questions. How many people do you think know the secret millions? Politicians, celebrities, businessmen, and women. Yeah, all of the above. And I have talked to some recently, will not mention their names, and there are people that know. And a lot, of course. But, and, and the reason they do, the reason why Flat Earth is crossing all boundaries, and it's in every circle, it doesn't matter how beautiful or talented or powerful or rich you are, or, sorry, wealthy, uh, is because Flat Earth is bigger than that. Flat Earth is bigger than, you know, if you're super wealthy, you don't care about certain things. If you're super beautiful, you don't care about things. Flat Earth is bigger than them. It is the ultimate gossip chain story. And and uh, people love a good story. People are suckers for the truth. I'm using all sorts of sound bites right now. Uh, but it's true. People are suckers for the truth. And they love, a, gr a great story transcends everything. People love, after you get past the small talk, it's like, how's the weather? Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. People like, it's like, hey, you know what I heard recently? People are like, it's kind of this competition. Like, who's got the better headline? Yeah, what I read recently or blah. Somebody will eventually throw, it's kind of like a poker game. People will eventually throw um, flat earth into the ring. And that's when it's like, whoa. Yeah, it's like, it's like really like you're playing a poker game and then somebody throws down this, this golden titanium chip. <laughs> it's like, I'll raise, see you and raise this. And people have never seen it before. It's like, it's, glo it's glowing. It, it's not just shiny. It's actually glowing. It's like, what's that? That's flat earth, my man. Anyway, this is called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I've been a flat earther for a while. I would like to ask you a few questions. Oh, right, right, right. Are there any conspiracies you can think are ridiculous? No, I, I don't. I mean, I, there's some I don't like, but I don't think anything's ridiculous anymore. And why do you think the government allows for private space companies? Well, because I think they're shuffling it off from NASA. I think they're going to throw private space companies under the bus the best they can. Remember, NASA, for whatever reason, even though their budget gets bigger and bigger, has been getting smaller and smaller. They haven't had space shuttles for years. They don't go to the moon. They send a few probes out here and there, if you believe them. So why do they keep getting more and more money? They get $50 million a day now. A day. That's ridiculous. That's huge amounts of overhead. Uh, if I was running the show, I would have banned it. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Peace and love, brother. That's from Martin. Martin Knit. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm not good at math. It's a great opening line. But tell me if you think this helps support flat Earth, that a globe cannot be turned into a flat map. Do it because it'll distort the measurements. Yet a flat map can be distorted into a globe. Here's what I got, where I got that information from, and that's from uh, math.rice.edu slash polking, P uh, tilde polking slash cartography slash cart.pdf. Yeah, all right, I'll take a look. This one's called... Survival Guide point of view. Mark, the following is a true story, sort of. It has to do with point of view. Early this evening in a densely green territory known as Tall Blades, a massive saucer-shaped craft appeared for a short time, then disappeared. A strange yet irresistible smell drew us towards it. I'm part of a special rapid response team that deals with this sort of phenomena. Organic matter... Wait a minute. How long does this go? Uh... Just trying to read. Uh, it's an okay story, but it's sorry, it's a little too out there for for this particular thing. But thank you for sending that. This one's called mathematical proof that gravity does not impact Earth's motion. Uh, I will only read the first three paragraphs of this. Uh, my name is Josh Enotomo, and I've been following your work for some time. I initially viewed your research and similar flat earth proponents with scorn, but I have learned to open my eyes when I discovered significant inconsistencies with the mainstream scientific community's assertions. One contradiction I just discovered was a glaring error committed by a physics astronomy professor. He claimed that a person at the equator will experience more gravitational acceleration and therefore more weight. 
well, at the equator rather than somewhere away from the equator. However, the scientific consensus is that you would feel less weight. Yeah, the equator, because centrifugal force, right? Would counteract some gravity. This is due to the fact that according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, a gravitational attraction between bodies becomes exponentially weaker when inc with increased distance. Since the equator represents the greatest distance away from the Earth's core, a person should experience less gravitational acceleration, not more. And there's some math, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, interesting. Don't know why he would say that. I mean, I've been talking about that one for a couple of years now, which is, you know, it's like a merry-go-round. The outside of the merry-go-round is trying to throw you off. Now, if you believe in the globe, it can't throw you off because gravity is so powerful, it's holding you on. But there should be some sort of pull from the centrifugal force countering gravitational, which means that you should weigh slightly less at the equator and slightly more at the North Pole. Because remember, the center of the merry-go-round, you're just turning in a circle. There's no force at all. Hmm. Interesting. This one's called Short Antarctica Question. Hi, Mark. I'm Mackenzie. Thanks for all your sharing. If you're not able to respond, I understand and appreciate all your work. It seems that there are flights over Antarctica, really, where and near it. Well, near it, sure. Which contract, contract? You mean contradict? With the classic flat Earth map because it would take much longer than they say or would be impossible. Do you believe these flight sources? Over, the, over Antarctica? No. To Antarctica? Sure. Uh, thanks for your time. If you can't respond, I understand and appreciate you are sharing in the name of science and adventure. Great. Thanks. Mackenzie A. Lorario. Lor Lorero. Lorero. Uh, yeah, I, I think you, I think you can fly to Antarctica, of course, the coastline. Sure. But that's it. You're not going to, you're not flying over it. No. Antarctic Treaty in effect represent this one's called flat earth clues full hey mark still a flat tart and my wife is still a globe head she seems more interested in looking at debunk content than trying to see why i believe oh, yeah i'm asking her to watch flat earth clues but i can't find the full version in one video is that video still available i only see it see it split into segments thanks david from caldwell idaho and hopefully he found it by now it's you can find it in various places it's all over the place uh, one person grabbed it mashed them all together called it under the dome full documentary one we called it they're hiding god uh, i called it the flat earth clues director's cut which was banned for a small uh matter of time because they called it a borderline video because they thought it might incite civil unrest which i thought was interesting i had it overturned i basically wrote them one sentence and i said uh this is just a collection of what i've been doing for a couple of years now so there's no offensive content period and after it took them i think like five weeks and they finally released it they're not exactly fast over at youtube this one's called survival guide please hello mark thank you for helping me find the truth from a very young age i knew there was more to this life than what i was taught in school i've been using your videos to help guide my friends and family to the truth oh uh, we've discovered thanks for all your hard work and keep fighting the fight one day the whole world will find out the truth amen uh, it's nice to know we are ahead of the curve. No pun intended. Also, please send a copy of your survival guide. Thanks and God bless. Nathan Mailhot. Is your real name? Harrisonburg, Virginia. Mailhot. Awesome. Okay, this one's called Sun Under Clouds. Mark, I have a theory to share. The view we see of the sun being under the clouds could be on account of the convergence optical effect one if the clouds go to the horizon really thick the sun will not be visible however if there's a clear opening further from the horizon the clouds in view would appear higher in the sky due to the ceiling meeting the floor optical effect or say you have a long hallway with lights running down and every 20 feet you hold on hand like a salute at mid forehead level then consider each set of lights as a snapshot for the sun's position during the day you will block a couple sources of light but as the hall continues the light will be revealed under your hand obviously that does not mean your hand is actually higher than the light is in perspective can you work to debunk the claim that a reflective item was left on the moon oh well it'd be nice to try but uh, how, how am i supposed to do that didn't they say on the didn't they stay on the dark side no they didn't it was apparently all on the light side how could they have left it on the visible side they just said they did uh aaron would be real fun to beat up <laughs> i mean aaron raw that's not his real name if i see that fat rude arrogant proud heathen i think god told me to wow 
don't yeah no, i do not encourage anybody to beat up anybody look we we've gone three years and we haven't had an incident where a flat earth has hurt anybody or flat earth has been hurt and i think that's that's for a reason sorry i really dislike that he breathes <laughs> wow okay don't okay first off don't jh whoever you are don't kill aaron raw please don't kill him he looks like he suffers enough already seriously uh, hope you read this on air. I'm a new flat tard six months. I wear MSM labels like a badge of honor. Love your work. I have more theories. I just don't know if I come across as stealing them. I don't know all the ideas out there. Last different subject than your platform. But can you just remind people that the establishment justifies mass baby murder? And that is immoral and unnatural. God bless. Okay. There you go. This one's called what? This one's called survival guide. I've gained so many of those. You know, I should probably not. It's, it's, it's systemic at this point. Uh, survival Guide Plus. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your work. I would like a survival guide, please. Also, any tips on coming out to friends and family? Yeah, don't. Don't do it. Uh, only the people you can trust. Remember, the first rule of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. Some are receptive. Others call me crazy and think I'm joking. Anywho, thanks again. I'll hear you on YouTube soon. Michael? Yep. Just be careful who you do not come out. Of, I mean, at a family gathering, talk to somebody you can maybe trust or again, come at them sideways. That's always a good tactic, which is you come at them and say, yeah, I heard this crazy thing on YouTube, but flat earth, how weird is that? Right. And if they look at you and like, man, you're not going to believe this, but I'm into flat earth too. And it's like, dude, so am I. It's like, dude, dude. And the whole, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, this one's called Flat Earth Question. Hello again, Mark. I have another quick question for you. Been soaking up your views and can't seem to find anything that mentions any change in elevation. What I mean is I haven't heard any details on these long distance laser testing that compensates for t change in, in, changes in elevation. I think sometimes when people hear flat earth, they think sheets of ice. But also remember, though, flat, there are still changes in elevation like mountains, hills. Please share your thoughts. And thanks again, Chris W. Yeah. Oh, no, we, we mention elevation all the time. That's why we do it at the water. Because remember, sea level is literally sea level. There's not like Atlantic sea level and Pacific sea level and, and Mediterranean sea level. It's all just sea level. When you're at the water, you're literally at zero elevation. That's what, that's what, when you're at the water, that's what it is. Unless you're at like a high altitude lake or a low altitude lake or something like that. Uh, when you're at the beach, any sort of, connected to any of the oceans, you're technically at zero elevation. That's why we shoot it at the beach because it's easy. Remember, people always do the easiest stuff. So if you're, I'm shooting at zero elevation on one side and you're at the other, the only time we even factor in the elevation is the target height. So if your target is six feet high or it's 10 feet high or my camera is three feet off the beach, yeah, then you have to do the math or plug it into whatever math, math calculator. But yes, we, we absolutely do bring that up. This one's called yes. Okay. It's literally called yes. Let's see how long it is. It is loading. It's from Patrick. It's loading. Mark, I have a question to ask and hope you can tell me what exactly they are showing all the higher ups in Antarctica, like the Pope and the other people, including Ball, Buzz Altman. <laughs> okay, it's Buzz Aldrin. And I don't know what they're showing him. Do not know what the hell they're showing them down there. Why the Secretary of State, uh, John Kerry at the time, and Buzz Aldrin, and the, uh, the Orthodox Pope from Cuba... And anybody else that keeps that went down there in, during 2017, weird year for flat Earth, super super weird year. So I do know I do not know what's what's what they're showing him down there. Uh, this one's called new flat Earth plates, and on another plate mark. See you on the 30th. Yep. And yeah, if you guys, I'm I want to see how you know all the cool plates from all of the United States and Canada because we can actually do vanity plates, whereas other countries are not that vain. They, um, people, you can send me your you know, pitch snapshot of your, your custom license plate and I'll put in, you can just look it up on YouTube. I've done a bunch of compilations. I just go flat earth license plate compilation. Just type that in and they don't get a lot of hits for whatever reason. People are just like, Oh, it's just fluffy stuff. It's like, I think it's kind of cool. Remember, these are people that put themselves out there and you know, they're driving around in a car. I mean, it's not like D marbles van where it's covered with flat earth graffiti, but they're driving around a car with a flat earth license plate. And I was the first one to get a flat earth license plate. Just uh, remember, cause you, some States it's six letters, some it's seven, some it's eight. So whatever. So mine is seven letters. Uh, it's, it's flat. That's literally what my license plate says. This one's called side channel. Mark, I'm watching astronauts on side channel right now. I just can't. I need beer. Can't. <laughs> That's from Alex. 
damn straight. I can't. Yeah, I, 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 I actually just I get physically angry now every time I see anything that NASA puts out. It's really, really painful. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm not going to read that right now. This one's called Filmmaker James Goldsmith thanking you. Mark, I enjoyed the shortest four hours thank hanging out with you and your fans. Oh, yeah. Keep me in mind as a social media producer. I am in the hood to help you professionally up your game in any way. You are a fabulous person. Yep. Yep. I met you at the Muckle Teo meetup, if I'm not mistaken. That was a lot of fun. This one's called Greetings. Hi, Mark. Just listened to your Esquire interview. Good job. Believe me, I'm just a normal retired citizen, which wants to find out at least one ounce of truth in all this so I can validate my existence before my time is up. Yeah, isn't that the truth? At least, what what would you be willing to pay for the truth? Whatever it is. Again, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be rich. I just want to be right about something. Uh, everything else, you, you're, you're, you're at the whim of others. They tell you what's what. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you found out something on your own? It's like, yeah, yeah, and it's something big. Anyway, uh, two things that came to mind about the global conspiracy, and I think you should debate in future videos. A bigger conspiracy, <coughs> excuse me, in financial terms, perpetuated against the American working class and no one talks about bigger than NASA. And the wars is the Affordable Health Care Act, which was imposed on the middle class out of the blue. And according to my estimation, it has been extorting over a trillion dollars from hardworking people without having improved any quality in the system, but just the opposite since it started its implementation money that is going straight to line up the pockets of the insurance and pharmaceutical companies as well as all the and the health care apparatus that is bankrupting this country. So on and so on. He jumps over to the Malaysia 370. I don't know the size and who was involved in the conspiracy, but perhaps I fell for uh, other near or over the Antarctica and all the evidence cleaned since they didn't want to attract attention to that area. All he notices is the more people are empowered with communication technology and can understand what is done to them, the bigger the size of the scams at all levels, the more numb to them society becomes. And it's all perpetrated, like they say, in their faces, there is no correlation between progress and civilization. All indicators seem to point we are going in the opposite directions. The only thing is now there are a lot more countries and big players that have access to the manipulation because of the te technology. So things are done in conjunction at much bigger level of coordination. Anyway, don't need to reply, but at least you're reading my comments. Can you say yes or no? Best wishes. Uh, what am I saying yes or no to? Oh, no, no. No, I'm, the the healthcare conspiracy is it bigger in financial terms? No, flat Earth is is the grand poobah. A one, uh, Umro nu, Umro, Umro, whatever doesn't really matter. I was trying to quote from airplane and I, I I lost it for a second. Okay, let's jump on to yeah, healthcare is not not the best. This one's called Photo Slideshow F.E. Awesomeness. Mark, thought you might appreciate. I'm the one who makes decals. I've actually been talking with Robbie Davidson. He wants me to get a booth selling flat earth decals at the Denver International Conference. Super stoked. Going to come with my sister who also has a decal business online. I've been designing new flat earth decals. So if you know anyone who has ideas, please friend, free, feel free to send them my way. That's from Carson. And oh, cool. He put, he put uh, flat earth decal on a drone. That, you know, all those drones look like cool little insects, don't they? With those, with those blades. It says the earth is flat. That's really awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Really cool. And I hope, hopefully you see him at the Denver conference in November. I'm going to the Edmonton one in Canada with a whole bunch of flat earthers. That's coming up in August, second week of August. So look that up. You can go to FE, I'm sorry, FE2018 slash Canada. This one's called number one reason why we can't go into space. Must read on air. Okay. Mark, keyword to going to space is 62 million. You telling me not one of the hundreds of millionaires on this planet cannot go into space. I'm calling BS on that. Some Richie Rich, uh, good reference, does not have 100 million to spare to go into space. See picture attached to prove my point. Oh yeah, SpaceX charging 62 million to send somebody to space. 62 million is not a lot for a billionaire. I mean, yeah, it's a chunk of change, sure. But to get into space, to actually say you went into space, there's a lot of billionaires that would that would go for that. Absolutely. This one's called Happy Birthday. Because back in April 24th, it was my birthday. Happy big 50th, Mark. Uh, 
Every time I hear that, I just wince. I never thought I'd make the 50. Honest to God, if you lived my life, you'd be like, holy smokes, how did you make it? I, I should have been blown up by now. Blown myself up. Should have happened. Absolutely should have happened. Uh, I've got you by 10 years. Oh, only 60. Hope you enjoyed a great day. Moreover, it actually gets better from this point. Not downhill at all. That's from Audrey. I don't know if it's not downhill, but thank you, Audrey. It's very kind of you. This one's called Bird's Fourth Expedition. Hi, Mark. My name is Michael from Sydney, Australia. I'm 52. He's older than me. Thank you for your YouTube videos, your research, and your way of explaining things, including putting up almost every argument against your views and putting up a compelling case against each argument. Yeah, I, was, I had to. Again, I, I wasn't going to go down flat earth unless I had all my ducks in a row. Can I use any more quotes? I think I could. I'm a Christian. I am fascinated with this topic. When someone takes the time, a lot of time, to research videos such as yours and Eric DeBay's, it is very hard to refute. Unfortunately, most people, my friends included, take exactly zero time to research, unfortunately, due to their bias and conditioning. Yeah, me too. I mean, remember, I was, I was fighting Flat Earth for nine months before I finally came around. I was stubborn. My question is... Admiral Byrd's fourth expedition, he took with him an army of people. Yeah, Operation High Jump. Wouldn't it be great? That was 1946, by the way. Wouldn't it be great to be able to find a dozen of those soldiers now and interview them independently with each other? Yeah, probably not going to be alive. I mean, my grandfather who passed away this year at the ripe old age of 100, he fought in World War II. And this was right afterwards. So these guys would be in their 90s. If they are still alive today, do you think that it's possible to find out who these people were? Nope, nope, nope. They're gone. Think it would be a good exercise. Cheers, mate. Keep up the good work before they delete your YouTube channel. God be with you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. This one's called Top 5 Questions Asked Professors. Hi, Mark. Please send me the list of questions to ask professors and professionals. Thank you, Lisa in Orlando. And yeah, there's another thing you guys can ask for if you want. Uh, I had to come up with five science questions for the... Uh, there was a Georgetown physicist who was supposed to debate me uh, on German television. And he, I sent him the questions and he folded like a card table. He was going to have no part of it. And they were simple questions. I'll rattle them off to you real quick. Uh, the first is long distance photography. The second is the vacuum of space. The third is the eclipse shadow. The fourth is the temperature of the moon. And the fifth is their Van Allen radiation belts. Each question is only about a paragraph long, real simple, real straightforward and science based. Would not touch it. So if you guys want those questions, I can shoot those to you as well. Just say, I want the questions. This one's called Happy Birthday, Mark. Oh, boy. I shouldn't have kept these around. Yulian, listen, because I, oh, seriously, birthday is in my rear view mirror now, but that's all right. Yuli, Yuli and I listen to TFR and want to send you greetings on your 50th. Take care and have a great year, bro. Dan and Yuli. Thank you very much for that. This one's called Flat Earther Boy Song, and that's from the Beat Freaks. And it says, hey, Mark, thanks for giving, having us as your last caller on the show. We greatly appreciate the amazing content you put out. Thanks again, Chris, a.k.a. The Beat Freaks and the Flat Earther Boy song attached. Yeah, that's a fun song. Yeah, we're that kid. At the end of the show, a um, uh, uh, father put his son on. His son is a flat earther and he was talking about his experiences in school. And it was a great way to end the show. Great, great kid. Very, very proud of him. Young flat earther. This one's called Survival Guide, please. Hey there, Mark. Long time listener. Just finally getting off my ass to request your survival guide. Yeah, I was about to say. Very excited for your debut in the upcoming film festival. I was up in Toronto, and you guys want to look up that film. It is called BehindTheCurveFilm.com, and it's currently looking for a distributor. Hopefully, it'll find one, and I am featured in it, which is fun. They spent a year with the Flat Earth community going, starting here and ending at the conference in Raleigh. It was a lot of fun. We would love a shout out at my gym. My trainer and good friend is also a supporter of the show by saying we keep it flat here in the 46th Street Snap Visit Fitness in Minneapolis so we can pull the audio for a channel intro here for Minnesota Flat Earthers. You are awesome and cannot thank you enough. Flat. And that's from Brian. Thanks, Brian. This one's called Guy from a University with a Master's Science Degree here. Okay. Hi, Mark. I have a master's degree in computer science. Well, I, I, physical science is good. Computer science, I, I, not, I'm not, it's fine though. Hey, master's degree, good for you, right? Uh, with specialization in physical simulation. Oh, okay. 
I'll, I'll go with that. There are proofs from old Greece why the world must be a sphere, but to make it easier for you, okay. Buy a telescope, here we go. Buy a telescope, look at all the other planets and moons and look and see if you can find the ISS. If you find the ISS, watch a live stream from its onboard cameras. You can see the globus Earth and saw the place where the camera stream is coming from. And since you have a telescope, if all the other celestial bodies are spheres, why should the Earth not be a sphere? Yeah, here's your classic conditioning right here. But in general, like water drops from spheres, oh boy, any other material forms a sphere when it's alone in space. There is a central point, center of mass, which pulls all other matter to it. Everything experiences the same force. This is why everything gets as closely pulled as possible to the center. So everything has a minimum distance from center, which is a sphere. Smaller asteroids are looking for like more like potatoes. That is because gravity is too weak to surpass the friction between particles, particles completely. But after reaching a certain size, gravity wins and the body becomes a sphere. Why is a galaxy... I'm going to read this last paragraph here and then I'll stop preaching because the guy's lost. Remember what I said, if somebody... I'll just say it again. If you have a master's degree, in this case, computer science. I used to say physical science, but this guy's lost as well. Why is a galaxy or other solar system not a sphere? Because of conservation of momentum. Collapsing cloud has one rotational plane. I mean, he's literally quoting textbook. When the cloud shrinks, momentum stays the same, but the volume decreases. Every stay, Everything stays in the rotational plane and keeps its momentum by increasing the velocity. The velocity keeps the planets in orbit, and the rotational plane keeps them float like a disc-like path, mostly... Some far out objects have a different angle. And his last sentence, watch Neil deGrasse Tyson on why the earth is not flat. It is known since old Greece and there is no conspiracy to hide the flat earth from us. And that's from Rashid. Uh, he's in Germany. This is a, that's a German, uh, German email address. And yeah, that's what we have to run into. Look, you, you, you quote, you tell people long enough what the earth is. And if they go into, se you know, uh, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD in some sort of, uh, we'll take computer science this time. They, they're good. They turn basically into a globalist robot. They will not, they cannot snap out of it until the mainstream tells them because they only believe mainstream. They don't believe in conspiracies, period. Uh, let's see. This one's called Conference and Meme. Mark, I hope this email finds you in good spirits. I've been listening to you for a couple of years now. Eric Dubé and Eric and Dave Moore were my first two Flat Earth YouTube experiences, but I was quickly introduced to you and everyone else right after that as my thirst for more intensified. So thank you for your great information and great entertainment. I am located in Dayton, Ohio. If you're not familiar, Dayton is the hometown of the Wright Brothers, and we are considered the birthplace of aviation. Because of this, Dayton is a big aviation city, and this is the reason why Dayton would be great city to host the next flat earth convention convention not only are we air centric extremely affordable but we are centrally located between cincinnati indianapolis columbus detroit dayton is within five hours or less from chicago pittsburgh cleveland nashville lexington yeah i know it's east coast which is why actually why raleigh did so well because there's a lot of people that drove there um Governor Kasich says we are 600 miles or or less to 60 percent of the entire u.s population yeah it's true like the like that you're pitching the town, like that you're you know could, could we get to that point where it's like okay what cities are going to be considered for the next conference? I perform in a popular local band and I and I have contacts to local news channels. Wow, he is really milking it. Uh, print and local businesses, meaning we can get this exposed extremely well. I, if indeed I can definitely be your point man and eyes on the ground here. I have a master's degree in North American studies. See, and he's fine. I have four awesome children, have been married for 20 years. A wife also has a master's and a sticker, stickler for the Oxford comma, meaning i not too much of a weirdo, but that could turn people off. Dayton is also the home for the United States Air Force Museum. And wow, it's amazing. It's full of not only every flying machine you can think of, but also NASA rockets, Apollo things, and astronaut vehicles. It would be a fantastic day trip for the convention. Thanks for giving this a read, Adam. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. And thank who knows? Maybe, I, you know, Dayton, Ohio, I, I'm not in charge of the conference, but I will mention it. All right, see how many more we can crank out in the last uh, six, seven minutes. This one's called Notes. Hi, Mark. I've been following you for a couple of years now and really love your videos, especially the experts who share their knowledge. Can you send your science notes? Physics class student who called in of the five areas you discussed. Also, if you have all the survival info, see, you got to put the survival guy that in the beginning. Otherwise, I'm going to miss it. And now I got to put this in my to-do pile. Have known the earth was flat since I was a kid and went to the seashore. I just stuck a yardstick up in the water level 
and noted there was no curve. Plus all the lies the establishment has been spewing over the years has confirmed my distrust in science. Also, I was a reader of Wayne Green, who sold a great book on the moon figury. I think the author was a guy by the name of Rene. Anyway, you are doing a fantastic work in uncovering this mass deception, which is very well might be talking about the Bible and Revelation. Well, my birthday was on the 22nd, and now I found out yours is on the 24th. Uh, Taurus people have to stick together. A great big happy birthday from an older guy. Hey, it's not that bad over 50 if you take care of yourself. Yeah, that's true. I have taken care of myself. That I, I really developed, didn't develop any vices. And also didn't have kids, which will aid you, even if you're a guy. Um, didn't mean for this to be so long. Again, happy birthday and many more. Randy. Thank you, Randy. It's awesome. This one's called Northern Lights. A little too long. A little too long, but thank you. And that's from Lori Nicholas. I will read this, but I'm not going to read this on the air. There's a lot of math in here. And it's, uh, it's uh, but I, I, I will read it. Thank you, Lori, for sending that. This one's called 29-year-old saves astronauts from space junk. Mark, this is beyond ridiculous. Watch this Asian 19-year-old say he solved space junk. <laughs> she tracks it, predicts collisions, predicts best time to launch. So how did she solve it? Screw Kessler's syndrome. We just got to track it. LOL. Later, Mark. Virgil. Yeah, good article. You can look that one up. I remember that article came out. That was that didn't get a lot of traction either. This one's called Possible Curvature Picture. Hey, Mark, longtime supporter of Flat Earth and your show flown lots of times in my life. Never seen this when I looked out the window just wondering what your thoughts were. Your friend Matt, a.k.a. Globe Earth Troll. And there's no picture associated with it. Google search for, oh yeah, yeah, curve when you're flying. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Thank you. This one's called Salt and Sea Earth Test with the IIG. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, that Salt and Sea just, that ha just happened. That was just uh, some emails bouncing around between Aaron Kreeshock and Ross Blocker and... Uh, National Geographic and myself and Aaron came out there. God bless Aaron Kreeshock. <laughs> Not only did he show up at the meetup on Friday, but then he showed up at the test at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. Man, I don't know. I don't know if he got any sleep at all. He and he didn't even sit down that much. He was just standing uh, like a statue. A lot of what he wasn't uh, going after verbally going after the uh, the IIG team. But I really like Aaron. He's great. Uh, let's see here. NASA gives Flat Earth a kick. Mark updates. F February 27th, undocking of Soyuz capsule and return home of Expedition, Expedition 54 from the IAS ISS. Live NASA Earth from space. Uh, just le like a bunch of headlines. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to get to the point, though. The station is crewed by NASA astronauts as well as Russian cosmonauts and a mixture of Japanese, Canadian, and European astronauts as well. Is Earth flat? No. The ISS passes into the dark side of the Earth for roughly half of each of its 90-minute orbits as the space station passes into a period of night. Every 45 minutes, video is unavailable. During this time, another breaks in transmission. Recorded footage is shown when back in daylight, Earth... Back in daylight, Earth will recommence. It's seen from the NASA ISS live stream. A real astronaut. Yeah, it's from Stan. I, I'm not exactly sure where he was going with this, but yeah, just more NASA fun stuff. This one's called Gravity Joke. Okay. Hey, Mark, have you heard the latest Gravity Joke? Didn't think so because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Stay flat, man. That's from William. It's good. Normally, I'd end the show on that, but I, I'm trying to crank through a few more of this. I'm sorry. I missed... Uh, I was in Los Angeles doing that, that National Geographic thing. So I missed last week's Sunday uh, thing. I was literally on the beach. A horrible, terrible beach That's at a dead sea, the Salton Sea. This one's called FRTVL. It does mean Fruitvale, a borough of Oakland. This kind of weird thing is that Pittsburgh is approximately 25 miles from Oakland and is in Contra Costa County, while Oakland is in Alameda County. Anyway... That's the definition of FRTVL. Happy birthday, sincerely, Lane. Yeah, when I do my, my radio show, people call in and sometimes they abbreviate the city. So there you go. That's why I he was mentioning that I didn't know what it was. Uh, this one's called YouTube Video Dome. Mark, I've been watching a series of Flat Earth Clues videos and almost all the way through them, I get the strong impression that this dome was created by us or past tense us. Yes, thank you. There you go. 
seems like a real possibility that we used up resources on a previous planet or previous version of this. Yeah. If there is no inhabited planets nearby, oh, don't, don't, you were close. Don't start latching onto planets again. Maybe we made one. Who says there's space? We created this dome on Earth in order to survive. Perhaps it was so long ago that history has been absolved over time. Yes, I see, he's right. I, he's hit and miss, but that's good. It's fine. He's thinking. Or maybe it was meant to be forgotten for reason un un reasons unknown. Yeah, there you go. Also another possibility, since time is a man-made construct and everything happens simultaneously, is that the dome was created by us, future tense, to protect us against some foreseen future event. Wow, all good stuff. That's from Nickadoo 22 Awesome. All right, let's do one or two more. Uh, this one's called Venus Transit Amateur Video. Hi, Mark. I came ac across this video and I was wondering how this can be. You can see clearly this planet Venus orbiting the sun. What do you think? I think that uh, Venus inside a planetarium looks just as good. That's what I think. That's from Renee. This one's called Flat Earth. It's from Jimmy Chu. Mark, your favorite show, Jersey Shore, talks Flat Earth. <laughs> Great. I, uh, thank you for that, for that, Jimmy. It's awesome. And let's do one more. Crib sheet. We'll just end on this one. Crib sheet, five questions. Mark, please send me your crib sheet for five questions. You were going to ask the Princeton physics professor. Actually, it was Georgetown, not Princeton, but that's fine. Thanks and happy birthday. You don't look a day over 38. Oh, that's nice. And I do hear that from time to time. Uh, you know, my hairline still says 50, but, uh, apparently I, because I lived in the Northwest and I didn't get a lot of California sun, I, I, I do look younger, so that's fine. Uh, take care. That's from Jack Frost. Not his real name. Anyway, we're going to end on that one, guys. Thank you very much for everybody that wrote in and everybody in the future that's going to write in. I have a ton of emails I still have to go through. I'm going to keep pounding away on these as long as I have a schedule, uh, that allows it. You can remember, you can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.